In 1961, a new ski mountain opened in Auburn, Maine. It was a small mountain, but it was loved by the locals. Over the years, it would grow and prosper from where it started. This little ski place was found in a valley, and they called it Lost Valley. In 1961, Lost Valley opened as a rope tow ski area. It was opened by Dr. Camille Gardner and Otto Wallingford. For Wallingford, the ski area was a way to have something to do during his downtime in the winter away from his Wallingford's fruit house. While head of Lost Valley, Otto Wallingford, with an agricultural engineering degree, made the state's first snowmaking system. It was such a big deal that they even put on their ad saying they had a snowmaker. In 1971, Wallingford revolutionized the way they groomed snow at Lost Valley. He called his invention the powder maker, and it became essential to snow grooming at Lost Valley. It also became a signature product of his company Valley Engineering, which he sold in 1975. In the beginning years of Lost Valley, lots of changes were made. In 1962, their second open season, Lost Valley opened a T-Bar. In 1965, Lost Valley had opened their first double chairlift. Otto Wallingford had put up lights, making night skiing possible at Lost Valley. Things were progressively moving, and by 1971, Lost Valley had a second double chairlift. In 1988, Otto Wallingford had retired from his ownership of Lost Valley. He later passed away at 76 in 1999. Fern Pontbriand then bought Lost Valley and became the new owner. He first became involved with Lost Valley in the 1960s as a ski instructor. He had actually become Otto Wallingford and Camille Gardner's partner in 1975. He grew up in Auburn and was an Edward Little and University of Maine Orono graduate. He constantly fought off developers trying to buy him out. His goal was to keep the ski area open for generations of local children to learn to ski. I like that Lost Valley is a local ski mountain where whenever you'll go you can find someone to ski with and that it provides youth a place to learn how to ski and snowboard. Pontbriand also began to boost a growing summertime banquet and wedding business at Lost Valley. He had a mission, Lincoln Hayes, who was Lost Valley's Vice President of Winter Operations said. He always wanted Lost Valley to be a community resource. Lost Valley is a great place to hang out with your friends, and it's a great community, and it's just fun to hang out. In 2003, sorrow struck Lost Valley. Fern Pontbriand had lost a year-long battle with cancer. Lost Valley became his family, his life, Diane Moreau said about the lay owner. After that, Lost Valley's ownership turned to Diane Moreau, Lincoln Hayes, and Connie King. Lost Valley had been progressively moving up until the point of Pont Brian's death. Lost Valley was thought to continue on the uphill slope they had been on so far. But Lost Valley had ended up losing so much money and they were so in debt that it was a question if they would even be able to open for the 2014 to 2015 ski season. A fundraiser was put on saving Lost Valley for the 2014-2015 season. Just before the 2015 to 2015 season, Lost Valley got a new owner, Scott Shanaman. He had many plans for improvement of the mountain to bring in more business. In 2016, a summer adventure park was added to the mountain. In 2017, they added a snow tube park. The snow tube park gave great opportunity for people who didn't like to ski or snowboard to still have a chance to come out and join in the fun. Plans for a new proposed chair have been added and are just waiting to be put into action. Lost Valley have been saved for future generations to enjoy. Lost Valley still provides for a great local place for people to come out and have fun.